Hi, everyone. Welcome to AFI Docs 2021. I'm Ken Jacobson, Senior Documentary Programmer. We're thrilled to have with us for this Q&A, Debbie Lum, Brown Class of 91, the Director of Try Harder, the producer and DP, Lou Nakasako, UCLA Class of 2011, and two very special guests from the film, Rachel Schmidt, Brown Class of 2021, and Sophia Wu, UCLA class of 21. Congratulations and welcome everybody. Thank you, thanks for having us. And can I point out there, Sophia and Rachel are also Lowell High School class of 2017. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and yeah, and in fact, let's start with that. So the academic year more or less that you cover in the film was which, which year so we can situate ourselves? Yeah, it was actually four years ago. So it was before the pandemic. It took a really long time to make the film um, as it can with an independent documentary. And we had no idea the pandemic would hit in the middle, making it that much harder <laughs> to finish it. Yeah, well, you did. And I think it's extremely timely. Uh, Debbie, I know you're, you're an SF-based filmmaker. So you probably already knew something about Lowell High School. Uh, but how did you come to this project? And then how did you go about getting the access that you, the great access that you got? I'll answer the first part and then I'll pass over the second to Lou, but um, I'm not from San Francisco. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, but the minute you come to SF, you hear about this high school. It's so iconic and it's um, the number one public high school. Um, and I guess what interested me is that it's been a sort of majority Asian American high school for a really long time. And I've always told film, made films about the Asian American experience um, for the last um, few, a couple of decades. Um, but I actually was looking at um, sort of the parents of kids who go to Lowell High School. I was looking at it through the stereotype of tiger mothers um, and what, uh, as a parent, like kind of the things that we go through to ensure the success of our kids. Um, but Lowell High School was gonna be like one chapter in that story. And then um, when we started doing the research, um, we met these amazing uh, kids like who are no longer kids anymore, Sophia and Rachel. And we just like fell in love with their story and, and wanted to tell their story. But it was, it was um, quite a feat to get access and Lou, um, was a big part of that having, um, you know, been born and raised in San Francisco. Do you want to talk a little bit more? Um, sure. So um, while, while Debbie and I were researching and doing some pilot shooting for her Tiger Mom project, we came across the, uh, this program at UCSF called the Lowell Science Research Program. So basically um, U UCSF and Lowell had an agreement where high school students would intern at uh, labs that were taking place at UCSF. And basically through that program, we met Richard Shapiro, who um, you all know from the film. And, you know, Richard just was so gracious in terms of um, giving us access to Lowell. You know, um, he was our entry point into the school. And then it also helped that at the time, the Lowell principal was actually my principal 10 years prior at another high school. So we had a little bit of a relationship there. And um, yeah, I, pretty much, you know, it's always pretty difficult to get, you know, access to an institution, especially for a documentary, right? So when the opportunity presented itself, I think, you know, me and Debbie kind of talked and we were like, you know, this is an opportunity that uh, we shouldn't pass up. So. Um, we're very, very, very lucky because, you know, getting access is probably the most important thing in any documentary. Absolutely. Can you talk a bit more about the casting process? This is for either you or Debbie. Um, you know, you mentioned Mr. Shapiro, who's such a great figure in the film. What about the students? How, how did you end up, uh, you know, on, choosing or having them choose you, <laughs> the group that we see in the film, um, as well as you know the parents we meet as well. Yeah, I mean, 
it's always interesting to talk about this with our subjects right next to us. Um, and I always want to hear their perspective too. But um, we interviewed hundreds of students. I mean, we pretty much met the entire senior class. It felt like um, we we did sort of use um, that AP physics class as our kind of staging and casting in a way. Um, just it was really more informal. It was interviewing kids and finding out about their stories, their relationships to. At first, you know, did they have parents who were, you know, um, putting a lot of pressure on them or, or you know, what was it, what were their college dreams? Um, but I would, and I, and I always say this, that Lowell High School is full of amazing kids. I felt like, you know, it's a really unique place. It's, it is on the one hand, it's majority Asian American at the same time, it's really diverse. And I felt like you could just drop a pin on any kid. Everyone had a story to tell, to tell, but, um, you know, at the same time, like we met Alvin on the first day, pretty much and knew like, you know, like, how could you not want to film Alvin? Um, <laughs> or at least Alvin dancing. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. So I had heard about Sophia because um, Richard had shared Mr. Shapiro. Um, I sh that's blasphemy. I should call him Mr. Shapiro. He had shared a, um, a, a card that Sophia had sent as a junior in high school to him, telling him that he was she was very excited to be taking his class the next year, and she he was like I have never I mean look at these students I've never gotten a card like this from a student before, but that was Sophia um, and then Rachel I think Lou you met Rachel right you were yeah yeah we met uh, I met Rachel in journalism uh, class so I think what happened. Um, yeah, so initially we were doing a lot of the casting process through Richard Shapiro's AP, a AP uh, C uh, class. But then, you know, as we started, um, you know, exploring the school, we wanted to explore different, you know, different subcultures within Lowell. And obviously the journalism one we found very interesting. And Rachel actually wrote this, um, you know, great article that's in the film about being biracial. And I, you know, that just piqued my interest to, you know, get into a conversation with her and just figure out, you know, what she wanted out of the Lowell experience and what she wanted out of her, uh, her future, right? And, you know, the immediate, the, uh, the thing that stuck out immediately to me was, you know, Rachel's a very compassionate person, you know, that I think that just kind of comes through on screen. And then on the other hand, you know, um, this is a predominantly Asian American school. And, you know, I think the stereotype is that only Asian parents are the ones pushing their kids to do well academically. And, you know, when I heard Rachel's story, I was like, okay, well, this is something that you don't hear every day. This would be an excellent story to kind of show on screen. So um, I think that's, yeah, that's pretty much how I met Rachel. And, you know, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was great. So let's bring our two students into the conversation now. Rachel and Sophia, what were your first reactions when you heard about this documentary crew coming to Lowell that was planning to shoot during your senior year? And then when they kind of first approached you about, well, maybe, maybe we want you to be in this film. Rachel, do you wanna go first? Sure, yeah. I mean, like Lou said, we met in journalism. And at the time I was in high school and I didn't really know much of what was going on. I'll be completely honest. <laughs> so when you tell me, hey, um, I'd like you to be in this documentary about Lowell students, I, I said yes, not quite sure of what it would entail. And I'm glad that I did because I think the film shows so many different stories and really you know, paints a completely different picture of who Lowell students are and what they're supposed to be showing that, you know, we're not all just one type of student. There are so many diverse stories and, and characters in Lowell. So I didn't know how important the film would be at the time, but I'm really glad that I, you know, agreed to be a part of it. Yeah, same, nearly the same story here, except I met um, Debbie and the team in my physics class, which is Mr. Shapiro's physics class. Um, and obviously they're not gonna tell you, oh, this is our plan for what kind of story we wanna craft. And so we really had no idea what was 
gonna happen and what kind of film was gonna come out of this. And I don't even know if I was, you know, fully clear on the fact that we would be filmed over the course of the whole year. Um, it was kind of just like, eh, not a big deal. Like, why does one just get filmed? It's like a fun thing for senior year. Um, and so it felt like a very casual decision to make at the time and fun, you know, who doesn't want to be filmed? Well, I guess there are some people, but for most people, I think it's a fun thing. And when you saw the finished film and we can start with you, um, uh, Sophia, and then go back to, to Rachel, what was your reaction and did anything surprise you? Um, first watch through, it was just so fun to see Lowell again. Um, I haven't gone back and visited very many times, maybe once, maybe zero times, I don't remember. Um, but it was so fun to just see the same hallways that I used to walk through and, you know, the classrooms and the teachers and just the general ambiance of high school. It's very um, high school. Uh, so that was really fun, just kind of like reliving those memories that I had forgotten about. Um, and then there was a lot of just, you know, I think what came with that was a lot of opportunity for reflection. And, you know, I've seen the film several times at this point. And so each time I kind of I'm able to think a little bit more about my experience and, and how I've grown since then. It was interesting watching the film back. I was also able to, to watch it with my mom a bit earlier and we looked at each other and we said, that was intense. Reliving the whole college admissions process from applying to waiting to hear back and everything. I had to relive it while watching the movie. And so that helped me, you know, take a step back and see what kinds of pressures, not just me, but so many, everyone at Lowell pretty much was going through during their senior year. And it, it really just puts things into perspective, especially because when you're going through it in the moment, you kind of feel alone, all the self-doubts you have about applying to college while you get into the one of your dreams and just, the, the regular high school, you know, self-doubts, you think that you're going through it and you're all alone, but then you watch the movie and you see, no, pretty much everyone else around you is experiencing these same things. And it was really quite incredible seeing the kinds of pressures and challenges that we all had to face at such a really young age too. So it was really a powerful experience watching it back. I was gonna ask you this later, but since you touched on it now, I wondering if, and this could be for anyone, you know, I think one of the things the film does so masterfully is it shows us sort of these data points about the system, you know, the system of, of the college application process and specifically, you know, elite colleges, whether they're public or private, um, but it doesn't really explore public policy solutions or anything like that. It just shows us how individuals are affected by that system. But now we're in the Q&A. <laughs> so um, I'm curious if uh, any of you have any thoughts about, you know, maybe what's not working about this system, because these pressures are pretty remarkable, pretty incredible. Um, and it sort of fills you with a lot of tension as a viewer watching you guys go through this. Um, so are there things that you think are maybe broken in this in this system? And do you have any thoughts about maybe how the process could be improved? Well, I, I can talk about um, in terms of what I wanted to do and make and telling this story. Is it's not a policy film. I think that's um, a great observation. It's really a human story because in all the headlines and all the, especially the ones that are about the sort of model minority and the stereotypical Asian American high achieving student, which by the way, high achieving students today across the US are the students at the greatest risk of anxiety, depression, mental health issues. And this is because, you know, you can, um, it's, it's the system, it, it, is, it is broken. I think everybody is, is quite aware of that. Um, and, um, but I wanted to understand why it's like that. Um, and, you know, just, you know, little there's a little tiny snippet of a of a youtube video in there that's um the sort of stanford dream video and when we found that i was actually really shocked um, a million views it's a super glossy you know it's it kind of strikes me as like 
you know, Camel Cigarettes advertising to young people in terms of like marketing this dream. Um, and there's this whole kind of, you know, that, you know, if you read about it, you know, things like Recruit to Deny, which, um, you know, call, you know, all of these top colleges are um, luring students to apply more get rejected, their acceptance rates go down, their rankings go up, and it kind of continues this cycle. And I mean, all that's there. And then at the same time, we're all human and we're all part of it, you know? And that's the part that I feel like we have the most control over <laughs> as individuals, as human beings. And that's the part that is, as a, as a storyteller, it's fascinating. I think the way in which we're all kind of invested in it. Um, and so, um, I mean, I think there's a lot of ways that you could address it. Um, like we're trying to, um, one of the exciting things about our film is that we're getting to show it at all these great places and we're trying to take it to high schools everywhere, um, even middle schools and, and universities to really recenter the student at the center of college admissions, which is what supposedly college is all about. It's about the student, um, but so much of it is, has been become about the industry. Um, and um, we're really looking at mental health and trying to promote wellness, trying to reduce the pressure on high school students, trying to look at things like not rankings, but college fit. Um, and I know it's like, you know, it's kind of almost embarrassing to say that if I'm a Brown University, um, you know, class of 91. Um, but although I, I, I will point out and Ken will probably agree with me that Brown has is always sort of been seen as like, the, the, the lesser Ivy. <laughs> so we kind of know how, how like un, unmeaningful those rankings are, they can be. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it is, um, it's this, it's about the student. It's, you know, you go to college to, to, um, to learn about who you are and, um, and, and become the person that you want to be so it's i think we we get caught up in the horse race and um when you what i'm hoping with try harder is that you can kind of um go through the whole process get through to the other side and and, and really think about what that means great thank you did anyone else want to add anything to to what debbie said I've got a lot more questions. So if you <laughs> if you want, I can jump ahead or if you have any final thoughts on that question, would love to hear those as well. And may I just call out, call in <laughs> Sophia? Because Sophia has, you know, in, in creating um, this campaign to really recenter students, Sophia has been working with us and wrote a reflection about it. That's really interesting to hear. Um, you know, four years later as an adult, a young adult on what that whole process was about. I was wondering if you want to share that a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know, Ken, if this has much to do with your original question, but I think that there are also a lot of other systems at play, like cultural value systems that a lot of students and families kind of ascribe to colleges. And I, I don't know why college is being politicized, but apparently it is. Um, and so I feel like that is kind of just a trend that is happening now, um, but it's just college. It's college, it's important, but it's not the most important experience of your life. Uh, I don't think it should be. Like in the same way that high school shouldn't be the most important experience of your life, I, you know? Um, and I think that what I kind of realized through writing this reflection was that um, up until my college application process, a lot of what I was doing and a lot of the identity that I was building for myself was very wrapped around college applications. Um, and even though, you know, it's not like I lived for college applications, I still did a lot of the, the things that I did um, and became the person who I became in order to apply for colleges. Um, and I think that that's how a lot of students live, especially if, if they, you know, have parental pressure or like pressure from their other, from their peers or just, you know, internal pressure. Um, and I feel like that's a very um, just like social issue that it's, it's kind of like this webby network of just feelings and pressures and just 
pulling like strings pulling from different angles that um it's like very hard to untie so <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was no, kind of a roundabout it's, answer i think no, no no it's great to hear your perspective on that four years out and you know there is that incredible scene in the movie where we're with you in the ice cream shop where you're working and you in real time you know you're going through the ivies and you're seeing where you, you know whether you're going to be accepted or not and you know there's really i think your poise <clears throat> is just extraordinary in that moment so i wanted to ask you how it felt to share that really pretty private moment with the crew and with all of us yeah um I don't know if that was the first um, acceptance letter opening scene that we filmed. Maybe Debbie or Lee, you guys can speak to this. Yeah, so it wasn't. And so I think I was already kind of used to that. Um, I don't, I, I can't really say how it felt. I mean, it kind of just was matter of fact. And I, I think when I saw that scene, I was like, I have like no expression on my face. I'm just like, oh, okay that's how it is <laughs> which is really funny um but i don't think i think that that reveals something about my own expectations i think that i wasn't actually expecting myself to really get in maybe i was in some way but i think deep down i knew i didn't really belong at some of those schools um and so i think it was still a very honest moment like it wasn't like having the camera there made it any different than it would have been i think it would have been just the same like picture me just there in my ice cream shop between scoops <laughs> opening my emails and then just closing it and scooping more ice cream. <laughs> well, you, like I said, you were so poised. And I think even in that moment, you show, um, you, you have a lot of perspective on what's happening and what's important. Um, and, and you did end up at a great school, UCLA. I hope you've had a good college experience at UCLA. That's been awesome. <laughs> I'm very great. sad to be leaving. Good to hear that it was so good. Um, Rachel, um, I have to ask about your mom. She's amazing. Uh, your relationship is so wonderful. Uh, I just wanted to ask, how, how has college been for the two of you? Uh, and how, how, has your, uh, how has your relationship evolved over these last four years? It's been fantastic. She's loved the, the Brown experience. I think when I, was over there she would make an effort to come by like at least once a semester just because she loves Brown so much she loves Providence the New England weather so we've really enjoyed that aspect together and I think the part that she's liked the most has been my gaining of like a very strong sense of self and and independence she kind of commented when we were watching the film that I said my mom a lot and I think that's really quite reflective of the fact that a lot of what I was doing or was feeling about college and the admissions process was you know after her approval and wanting to make her happy and so I, I'm glad that I went to Brown because it turns out that that actually was the school for me so that's great but while at Brown I've really figured out other things that I want for myself. And so when I've come back from that, I'm a completely different person in terms of my independence level that you saw from, from the film. So she's also really been a fan of that as well. That's great to hear. And please send her our uh, congratulations and, and uh, good feelings. Um, I, I wanted to, we're pretty much out of time, but I wanted to just um, give, give you a chance to, to do one more thing, which is just if you have any advice for parents and or for students going through this process now, is there anything that, any wisdom you, you can share with them? Um, I, yeah, I can, yeah, I'm not a parent or a current student, but I'll just say this. Um, I was having a conversation with my girlfriend yesterday over the phone and we were just talking about people in our friend group you know some of these people are asian american right and um you know these are people who went to great schools they got their graduate degrees and whatnot and i'd say we talked we talked about four people 
who are like all depressed. You know, they have like these great jobs. They got married. They bought their house, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, they're hitting their early to mid 30s. And they're like, you know, kind of having these 30 year old crisis. You know what I mean? Like what is, uh, you know, like what was I doing all this work for? Right. So, um, you know, for young kids or people in college or whatnot, you should um, just keep in mind about what keeps you going on a daily basis. You know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not one of these guys who's going to say, uh, you know, forget what society tells you or forget whatever pressures, because I think sometimes that is a good motivating factor. But you need but like anything in life, I think uh, you need a balance. Right. So that's just something that I would um uh, advise is, you know, try and find a balance of what you like and what, you know, you think society might want you to do. That's, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a very similar point to lose. Um, I think that it's, so in high school, you know, high school students are very young. And I think at that point, there are a lot of life experience that you just haven't been through yet. And it takes a certain amount of life experience to build up a certain amount of self-assurance and self-awareness. And I think that what's really important and just it's it's a good thing to start practicing is just to be intentional about things. Um, I think for me, I was going about my school life, not unintentionally, but kind of on autopilot with the, the goal of college as a destination. Um, and I don't think I was really thinking fully about a lot of what I was doing or why I was doing a lot of what I was doing. Um, and I think this goes for everyone. I think, you know, living intentionally and kind of stepping back sometimes to ask yourself what you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing is really important because I think, you know, we all find ourselves on treadmill sometimes that just go to nowhere. Um, and you're kind of just doing the same thing every day and then all of a sudden you wake up and you know you're like lose friends and you're 30 something and you're like what am I doing with my life um so catch yourself before you do that and really think about why you're doing what you're doing that's my advice and we are out of time but real quick uh Rachel and, and Debbie how about you um I think especially you know going along both what Sophia and Lou were talking about in terms of being intentional and figuring out who you are at high school in that time when you're thinking that, oh, I wanna do all of these things so I can get into a, a good college and make my parents proud. There has to come a point where you start thinking about what makes you yourself happy. And I think especially for high schoolers, particularly Lowell, I, I think we all know based on the film, how stressful the environment may be. Self-care, especially things that help you develop your own interests and give you your own peace of mind are, are really important. So I would say that probably establish those habits really early because when you're an adult, they can kind of get ahead of you. Thank I'll you. Try, okay. I'll try to say this really quickly. Uh, um, you can see it in our film. And, and, and I will say this from a parent who's going through it right now with three killed children and watching my sister go through it with her three kids who are all um, in college or, or, or graduated, it's brutal. It is a brutal process. And you know, you may think that, um, that you know the statistics and you know what it's like, but actually to go through it and to, to watch uh, a young student um, go through it is much more brutal than you think it will be. Um, we watched over the course of a year, we watched these amazing young women here grow up in front of our, 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 our eyes. It was kind of an amazing thing to see. And at the end of the day, as you can see in our film, like it all through all of the striving, which is totally, we all get that. We all want the best for our kids. We, want, we all want the best in life. It's like you're left with the human relationship at the end of that. And so you, you wanna think about what that is and, 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 and really protect it. That's how I feel. <laughs> Absolutely. That, that's a great note to end on. And it, I think it is truly reflected in, in the film. Um, uh, for folks who want to know more about your outreach efforts or about the film, is there a website they can go to? Yes, thank you. Please go to tryharderfilm.com 
slash impact if you really want to look into our impact campaign and uh, follow us on social media at Try Harder Film. Um, yeah, we, and tell everyone, you know, <laughs> see the film. Absolutely. Um, we are out of time. So we hope uh, our audience does share this, uh, this film with all your friends while the film is, uh, is being played at AFI Docs. Um, we'd also love to hear from you on social media at hashtag AFI Docs and check out the rest of our lineup at docs.afi.com. Thanks everybody. Thank Take you. Care.